Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Systems. In today's video, we will talk about constant flow primary chilled water system. After watching this video, you will be able to know what is difference between three-way and two-way valve system. What are types of chilled water systems? Sequence of operation of constant flow primary chilled water system. And in the last, you will learn about the advantages and disadvantages of constant primary chilled water system. Before discussion about the chilled water system, let's have brief discussion about three-way and two-way valve system. In this system, three-way valves are used. These valves have three ports. I made a detailed video about valves. You can have a look at that video by clicking on the card link on your screen. Here a mixing three-way valve is used with an AHU to control the chilled water flow through the cooling coil. Chilled water flow is modulated to achieve the desired set point of the AHU supply air. Now the valve is fully open and all the water is flowing through the coil. If cooling load is reduced, valve will be partially closed which will result in the flow through the bypass line from the supply chilled water line to the return chilled water line. Three-way valve system is a constant flow system where chilled water flow through the system is constant at all the times. While in a two-way valve system, a two-port valve is used which has one inlet and one outlet. This system is a variable flow chilled water system. When a two-way valve is partially closed, this results in high pressure in the supply line. BMS sends this increase in the pressure and reduce the pump speed to achieve the desired pressure. Now let's have a look at different chilled water system configurations. Firstly, we have a constant primary flow chilled water system. Then we have a primary secondary system. And in the last, we have a variable primary flow chilled water system. In a constant flow primary chilled water system, we use only primary pumps. Water flow in this system is always constant. This is a three-way valve system, while primary secondary system uses both primary and secondary pumps. It is a variable chilled water flow system and it uses two-way valves. Variable primary flow system also use only variable speed primary pumps. This is a variable chilled water flow system. It also uses two-way valves. In today's video, we will talk about only constant primary flow chilled water system. The other two systems will be covered in the next video. So please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified about the future videos. Before discussion about the constant flow primary chilled water system, let's briefly look at the load formula for the cooling load. Here Q is a cooling load in BTU per hour. Flow is water flow in GPM. Delta T is the temperature difference between the supply and the return temperature in Fahrenheit. As in the constant flow chilled water system, flow is always constant. So the delta T will be changing with the change in the load. Here a constant speed primary chilled water system is shown with dedicated pumps where a pump is dedicated for each chiller. The other configuration can be manifolded or header type configuration. Both of them can be used as the design preference and each of them has its pros and cons. For our discussion, we will consider the dedicated primary chilled water system configuration. Now let's have a look at different components of this system for its control and monitoring from the BMS. A differential pressure switch is installed across the pump to detect the water flow through the pump. Signal from this DPS is used to make a software interlock in the DDC to avoid dry run condition of the pump, which may damage the pump. After command from the BMS, DPS signal is monitored. If signal is not received within a delay time, usually it is 30 second, pump is commanded to turn off and pump fail alarm is generated on the BMS workstation. This alarm must be reset by the operator for the pump to run again in the auto sequence. Then we have a motorized butterfly valve or isolation valve. This valve is used with the each chiller plant to isolate the unoperational chiller. Then we have water flow switches installed in the chilled water line to detect the water flow. Discharge temperature sensors are used to measure the leaving temperature of each chiller. 
then a temperature sensor is installed in the main supply line to measure the water supply temperature to the building similarly a return temperature sensor is installed to measure the return temperature from the building now let's discuss the sequence of operation for this plant here both the chillers are duty and there is no standby while well, usually you will find a standby unit on your site but for simplicity i considered only two chiller plants and both of them are duty when chiller plant is enabled by a time program in auto or by a bms operator in manual first of all butterfly valves are commanded to open when butterfly valve is fully open ddc receives a feedback signal from the end switches on the butterfly valve actuator after receiving this opening feedback signal ddc commands the pumps to run as pumps are on water starts flowing and we get the flow signal from the water flow switches installed in the lines also we get the signal from the dps chiller command is interlocked with the flow switch signal chiller is commanded only when the flow is present so now after receiving this flow switch signal chillers are commanded to turn on as chillers are operating they discharge the water at the designed supply temperature in this case the designed supply temperature is 6.7 for each chiller and also the main supply temperature is 6.7 while the return temperature from the building load is 13.3 degrees celsius now let's consider that this system has a full load of 1000 ton with the designed flow of 2000 gpm and the designed delta t of 6.4 degrees celsius or 12 fahrenheit as now the system is running at full load each chiller is supplying 500 tons of cooling capacity and each of the pump is also supplying 1000 gpm so the total flow is 2000 gpm to the building and also the delta t at this time is 12 degree fahrenheit or 6.4 degree celsius chill water system runs at the designed full load for very less amount of time usually it is 1% of their lifetime now consider that the system is running at 75% of the load total load is 750 tons and each chiller is supplying 375 tons of the load now the delta t has been reduced it is now 4.9 degree celsius or 9 fahrenheit as the return temperature is reduced why this temperature is reduced just remember this three way valve system when the valve will be partially closed the supply water will start bypassing and result in reducing the return temperature now consider the system at 50% load where load has been reduced to 500 tons and each chiller is supplying 250 ton the return temperature is further reduced to 10 degree celsius and our delta t has become 3.3 degree celsius usually constant speed chillers efficiency is optimized between 65% to 85% of their load capacity so chiller efficiency will be very low at this 50% load and will result in energy wastage this decrease in delta t with load decrease results in poor performance of the chiller and overall system and is known as delta t syndrome condition in a constant primary flow system in this condition one solution to increase the delta t is to turn off one of the chiller as you can see the pump of this off chiller is still running as we need to supply constant flow at all the times that's why this system is very energy efficient and the operational costs are very high as pumps will be running at all the times and we need to pay for the pumping energy but when one of the chiller is off the other chiller is supplying all the load but you can see the now the overall supply temperature to the building will be higher i roughly shown these figures here and uh, these are not uh, the actual or from the sites this is to give you only the idea now let's consider that this is running uh, now let's suppose that the now the supply temperature is 8.3 this increased supply temperature may result in reduced dehumidification capabilities in the cooling coils of the ahus or fcus it may result in inability to satisfy some loads so even by turning off one of the chiller you will have high supply temperature 
and in the other condition the chillers will be running at low efficiency this is the disadvantage of constant flow primary chill water system that's why this system is used uh, for small buildings and for small systems we cannot use it for the large system if we use for the large systems it will result in very high operational costs and energy wastage uh, for the pumping energy and in terms of chillers in efficiency that's why uh, for the large buildings primary secondary or variable primary flow uh, systems are used which we will discuss in the next video now let's have a look at some advantages and disadvantages of this system the advantage of this system is low installation cost as this system is very simple we need only the primary pumps and no vfds are required and there are no secondary pumps so the installation cost is low also low space is required in the plant rooms as we have only the primary pumps there is no secondary these systems are easy to control and operate as this is very simple and there is no vfd involved and we don't we don't need to maintain any pressure inside the system it is a constant flow and all the pumps will be running at all the times disadvantage of this system as we discussed earlier is the high operating cost as pumps shall be running at all the times and during low delta t operating hours the chillers will be running at very low efficiency and the performance will be very poor if you find this video useful please like this video and if you are new to this channel please subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos